In this episode, we're going to replicate Facebook reactions using Angular 4 and Firebase. First, let's head over to Facebook just to see how it works. You can hover over a like button, which brings up a tooltip with all the different reactions. When you click a reaction, it updates your own, as well as the list of other users' reactions below that. First thing we're gonna do is import the graphics into our project. I found some free Facebook icons on iconfinder.com and then saved them under the assets folder in the Angular project. Now we can generate the reaction service and import the Angular Fire auth module as well as the database module. We're also gonna make heavy use of Lodash to handle the sorting and counting of reactions. We'll keep track of the user ID on the service and then we create an array of the actual emoji graphics. We want each emoji to be tied to a specific index and we'll save that index in the database. In this case, like will be zero, love one, wow two, etc. So our database is a collection of item IDs, things that can be reacted to, and each document is the keys of the users and a number that corresponds to their reaction. The first thing we'll do is get the associated reactions for an item as a Firebase object observable. Next, we create a function that allows the user to update their reaction, which has a default value of zero for like. We format the data by passing the user ID as the key and the reaction as the value, and then we just update that object in Firebase. Following the same idea, we create another function that allows the user to remove their reaction from the database. Now we create a utility function to count the reactions that come back from Firebase. It returns a JavaScript object where the key is the value of the reaction, and the value is the number of reactions for that type. We'll use it to display the total count for each reaction type in the component template. The final step is to determine the current user's reaction, so we just check the object for that specific user ID. Now we can start building the front-end component. First, we're going to need the input decorator, as well as on destroy, and we'll also inject the reaction service, and we'll use Lodash in here as well. The component will accept an input variable, which represents the parent's ID. That can be any kind of content that can be reacted to. Then we'll declare a few other variables that represent the data we're going to be showing in the template. During ng on init, we first get the list of emoji. Then we subscribe to the object observable. When it emits a value, it'll be a JavaScript object of user IDs and the reactions. We can use this object to count the total reactions for each type, as well as determine the current user's reaction. From there, we create an event handler that will actually update or remove a reaction. If the user already has a reaction with a matching value, then we'll go ahead and delete that reaction. If the value is different, it means the user is updating or creating a new reaction, so we go ahead and update that in the database. Next, we create another event handler that will fire when the user hovers over the like button, which will show the emojis and we create a utility method to return the emoji image path in the assets folder. And one more utility method to see if a reaction type has reactions so we know whether or not to display it in the template. Then we unsubscribe when the component's destroyed to avoid memory leaks. Now let's put this all together in the component HTML. First we create a wrapper around everything and use the mouse enter mouse leave events to toggle the visibility of the emojis. Inside this div we loop over the six emojis and use our emoji path helper to find the associated graphic in the assets folder. Notice how we also get the index while looping through this array because that'll be the value we save to the database corresponding to this reaction type. Next we'll add a like button that the user can click that will add just a generic like. If the user has liked this piece of content, we'll go ahead and add a conditional class that will color it blue and make it bold. And also, we want to display the type of reaction the user has had. In both cases, we check to see if the user reaction is not null. We can use the value of the reaction to get the corresponding emoji from the emoji list and in its index. Now we need to display the total reaction count. 
We do this by looping over the emoji list again, and we'll see if a reaction has taken place, and then we'll get the total count for that reaction. Just like before, we use the emoji path helper to display the corresponding image. Then we can get the count from our reaction count object by just passing it that index. Let's try it out in the app. If we hover over the like button, it should bring up the emojis. And if we click it, it should add a like, telling us what the like type is. The reaction counts are all kept up to date in real time. So if we have multiple users reacting to the same piece of content, we'll see the reaction counts be updated in real time. When looking into the database console, we can see that when a user clicks a reaction, it adds their user ID key and the value for that reaction to the database. That's it for this episode. If you found the video helpful, please like and subscribe. And if you want to support the channel, consider becoming a pro subscriber at angularfirebase.com. For just a few bucks a month, you'll get access to exclusive content as well as free one-on-one -on -one project consulting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.